Hi everyone, how are you? I'm Jessica, welcome back. In October, I have two quilt alongs coming up that I'm hosting. The first one starts today, that's the positive side quilt along. And next week, I'm also starting a quilt along for Starry Cabin. So I took a vote on Instagram a few weeks ago. Uh, actually, all the quilts, I put maybe five um, patterns up for a vote onto which one that uh, everyone wanted to be our next quilt along and they were all really close so I picked the top two that's what we'll do this month and then um, we'll see which ones we do after that but so the first one the one that is starting today is called the positive side quilt I will put the pattern uh, linked below so if you haven't um, seen it or heard of it and you want to join us you can purchase the pattern and then join in this quilt is really fun and relatively quick to make it uses a layer cake which is awesome I get requests for pre-cut patterns all the time, specifically layer cakes and jelly rolls. So this is a really great one to use a layer cake. And actually for this quilt top, all that you need is the layer cake and the background, and that's gonna make your entire quilt top. You also need binding and backing, but there's no extra yardage that's needed in making of the quilt top itself, which is fun because you can just grab a layer cake if you have one sitting on your shelf or um, there are some really great new collections out now and you can use that. Just pick whatever ba uh, background fabric you want to use with it and we can get started. So the first assignment for week one of this quilt along is to cut everything. That's what we're going to work on today. So let's get started. So here is the fabric I'm going to be using to make this quilt. I've been going back and forth on what fabric to use. I've actually thought about even making two of them. I'm not sure. I might. I definitely want to do this one. I need a cozy fall quilt. I have a spot in my house that I'm thinking of that I want to use this. And I had this layer cake. It's an older one, so it probably can't be found anymore, but I've had it sitting around um, Autumn Gatherings flannel. So this whole layer cake is flannel. And then I actually chose a flannel background fabric to go with it. This is one of the prints in this collection, and I have enough to do um, the background, and I'm going to do the binding out of this too. So really to make this quilt top this is all I need which is really fun because sometimes you need to add extra fabric in it's not difficult to get that fabric or to decide but when it's something just as simple as this it makes the cutting go even quicker you'll need to purchase the pattern I'm not going to go over um, actual cutting measurements but I'm just going to show you my process here so the first thing I'm going to do is open my layer cake And um, layer cakes, what it is, is a pack of 10 inch squares. Moda is the company who came up with the name layer cake, uh, but most fabric companies have these. It could be called something different though, a 10 inch stacker. Um, um, I think there's one called like 10 carat squares. It's basically just 10 inch squares of fabric. And if you didn't have a layer cake, but you wanted to sew along, that's perfectly fine. All you need to do is look at the cutting directions and cut those items from whatever cuts you have. So if you wanted to use fat quarters or fat eighths, that's fine. You can use anything. Now, I didn't calculate how many you'll need of each of those, so you'll have to figure that out. But really, um, the sky's the limit here. You could cut this from like large size scraps. It's a pretty versatile pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my layer cake and I'm gonna start looking through it. So um, these are all really nice kind of rich fall colors and they're flannel, so soft. Um, if you refer to the pattern, you'll see that in total, it calls for 32 10 inch squares. <laughs> Guest appearance. And uh, we break those up kind of. So 32 10 inch squares is the least amount of fabric you'll need, but you can use more. Now these packs of 10 inch squares, they come with 42. So if you're just cracking open a fresh pack, you're gonna have 42 squares. The first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna need to pull 30 of them out. So 30 of these squares are gonna be used to make the main block. And then um, the minimum amount you, you need to do the rest is two more squares to cut. Uh, those are used to cut some of the pluses that are the small pluses out. If you wanted to cut those small pluses from a variety of colors, you can just go ahead and use the other squares that you have in your pack and cut from there. I've gone through and I've pulled out the ones that I want to use 
um, my 30 main pieces. And so these are gonna be used to make the larger pluses and also one smaller plus each. So I'm getting a really good variety of color here. When I go through the layer cake, what I do is I try to balance out the colors that I'm given. Unless I'm making a quilt that is just like one color, one type of shade, um, I try to use a little bit from every group. So here um, I pulled out any duplicates. If a fabric collection has less than 42 prints in the collection, you're gonna get duplicates to make a total of 42 squares. So um, these were duplicates and I pulled them out and then these dark grays, those weren't duplicates, but uh, they were ones that I'm gonna use to make the pluses. And then there's also gonna be a variety of shades like you might not wanna use. So because I'm using this color for my background um, i didn't want to use anything too similar to that because i didn't want to blend in so like this gray probably would have been fine i could consider using this for my pluses i'll set that aside um, but these i did not want to use so i didn't want to use this because i thought it was too close that there's a duplicate of that same thing for this one i thought it would blend in too much and this one and then there's going to be an exact match because this background fabric is from this collection, so I took that out. Uh, this one would work probably, but it has a lot of cream in it, so I decided to take it out so it doesn't blend in. And then there is one more of these dark ones, which is a duplicate, uh, I have it right here if you can see, to make the small pluses. So uh, these I'm taking out and I'm gonna set them aside for another project. So right now I have all 30 of these. These are my 30 prints that I'm gonna cut a big plus and a small plus from. And then for the remaining small pluses, you only need, need two 10 inch squares to cut the remaining ones. But to give myself some more variety, I'm gonna cut the remaining ones from these. So I'll just split up those cutting instructions that were for two layer cakes and I'll split them up here. So the next step is just going to be to stack. Uh, I can probably cut, when I have a nice fresh blade on, you can cut between four and six layers at once. Um, with a flannel, it's a little thicker, so I'll probably do four or five layers instead of six. I'm just gonna stack these and I'm gonna cut them as specified in the pattern. Let's cut one stack together so you could see the way I do this. Now, one reason I don't always love working with layer cakes and jelly rolls and charm packs is because they have these um, pinked edges and uh, I understand the reason for them but I don't love working with them and I, I also don't love the variation so sometimes um, you know your 10 inches goes from point to point sometimes your 10 inches goes from valley to valley and I just you know, it's it's hard. It's hard to um, always like keep track of where it is. So the first thing I do is I make my stack. Right now I have five stacks. If you struggle with cutting, cut less at once. Don't don't go ahead and cut five. Cut one. Cut two. Um, but start with less. It's easier to have things slip and move on you if you have it stacked. So if you struggle with cutting, stack less and you should cut more accurately until you're more comfortable. Then what I do is I take that stack and I center it. I find, so this is a 10 inch square, so I'm gonna center it over 10 um, squares of my board. And I'm gonna have it like evenly hang uh, over as much as I can. Now, what this will do is uh, if there are, it will, it will tell me the size of this actual pre-cut. Um, it will tell me if I'm measuring from the point to the point or the valley to the valley of the, of the little pinked edges all the way around, like what exactly is 10 inches. So first I just like take a look at it and I just see how much I'm hanging over 10 inches. Now, I can tell you that for this pattern, we have one cut that is gonna use uh, the whole 10 inch, um, you know, one side to be 10 inches. And then we're gonna make two more cuts and we're gonna have just like a little bit extra on the bottom. So when I do this, I try to like minimize how many pinked edges I'm dealing with. And in this one, we're gonna be dealing with at least two on the, each side of the one cut. And then another of the cuts is gonna take this whole length and we're gonna cut them into squares. So those two edged ones will have it. But otherwise we can kind of like trim this a little bit so that we're 
every single piece we use doesn't have a pinked edge. I like to get like right over what I'm what I'm cutting. So I want to make sure I can see really good. I'm just repositioning this down to a spot on my board that I can lean over fully with my body and see where I'm at. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it a little bit past this line and then I'm going to uh, this line here and then I'm going to trim. Let me show you. So first, I'm just going to trim this little bitty bit off, and that's going to give me like one nice flat edge to work with here. So that's cut. Now you can see I can just get rid of that little bit and not have to deal with the pink edge. Now in my cutting instructions, it tells me the, the size to cut this, so I'm going to cut our, our next strip. So I have it cut, and then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to carefully slide this over. I need to still cut from this stack, and I don't want anything to shift, so I'm being really careful. Then I'm going to take the piece that I just cut, and I'm going to see, it, like, is this actually 10 inches? Can I trim off any of the edge? And actually, for this one, it seems like it's a tiny bit oversized. So I'm going to take and line up my ruler and trim and it's not going to be like a strip like before it's like fuzz um see how it's just it's like all those pinked edges which is helpful because now i don't have to deal with them at all i have a straight edge here and we're fine but then what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn it around and i'm going to do the same thing so i'm lining this up on the edge here on the edge here and i'm making sure um that I want this to actually be 10 inches. And the same thing is gonna happen on this other side here. I'm just gonna have like fuzz that I'm taking away, but really that removes all the pinked edges from this piece. And that's only because this layer cake happened to be like a fraction more than 10 inches. Some layer cakes, you're gonna be working with the entire piece and it's just gonna be 10 inches. And that's okay, uh, you can work with those. Um, but if, you know, I always like to check the size and if I can remove them, I remove them. Now we made, this is our one cut that we need. I'm going to put it over here. And we have this other piece now that we have to make our remaining cuts from. So um, now that I have like a nice straight edge, you can still work on your cutting mat for the sake of this video though, like I'm turning this sideways because I can see this better. So then you're gonna cut the next strip. So I've cut the new, the next two pieces that I need and like this is all that was left um, at the end of my layer cake. So you do have to be careful when you're cutting this after you cut the three uh, size cuts that you need from this and these two are gonna get cut lower. Um, you only have, uh, a quarter of an inch left over so uh, it's important that you don't when like when I trim this little bit that like I didn't take too much because you will only have a quarter of an inch left over after all your cuts are made uh, so if you don't want to trim away the um, pinked edges because you're worried about running out then then don't now, uh, I'm going to move to a smaller ruler size because I like to do that. I don't like to use a big ruler when I'm cutting smaller pieces. I just find like I'm more accurate. So now I'm just going to take this one piece that we have here and I'm going to cut it based on what the pattern says. And then this is what you'll have left just a little bit. So I'll put that aside. But so these are the two pieces that we need for the pattern. I'll set those aside with the big one. And then we have this last uh, strip here that I cut and we actually need every single bit of this. So out of this, um, we're cutting five squares. You want to be really uh, exact here because you have no excess from this. Sometimes when I have um stacked fabric it shifts a little so I just try to be really careful here and um have it not shift the best I can and then when I get to the last one I'm just checking because while I did cut off a lot of the pink edges when I trimmed you can still see there are some around still so I'm just double checking this size and there's a tiny bit that I can remove so I can remove that from it and I will. So now I have the squares that I need cut from this.
So from that layer cake, we've got five squares, we've got two rectangles and one large rectangle. And that's what we need to cut from each of the layer cakes. So I'm gonna continue on and cut all of these up. So I have gone through all 30 layer cake squares that I laid out and I have made the necessary cuts. This pattern called for 32 layer cake squares. So for the first 30 of them, we cut them as instructed in the directions. We have two left and those are gonna cut get cut another way. Those two squares are used to make five small plus blocks. So if you wanted to use more than the two, so you don't have as many duplicates, you can, uh, but you do not need to. So that part's up to you. I did pull out these. Here I have six colors. I only need to make five plus blocks, so I'm gonna eliminate one of them. I'm just gonna eliminate the light one because it's pretty close to my background color. I mean, it would stand out enough, but I'm gonna use these ones that have contrast. I cut the five pieces that I need, uh, once five squares per each of those five, and now those will make um, some of the extra small plus blocks that we need for the quilt. So we are all finished cutting the colored portions uh, from the quilt. We have used what we needed from our layer cake. Anything extra can be set aside in your scrap bin and used for something else. The next thing to cut is the background fabric, and I'm going to be using this color, which is also a flannel. Like I said, it is it comes in the collection, and uh, I, I really like this one, so I think it's going to make a nice background. Now, very simply though, I'm just going to follow my cutting instructions and cut all the pieces that I need to cut from this fabric. I have all the fabric cut for the quilt and laid out, including my binding, which is on the bottom here. Now, I like to use those 12 inch scrapbook bins that I've shown um, in some other videos to store. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all this and put it in a scrapbook bin. And what that does for me is when I'm working on a quilt over a period of time, instead of just like making it as quickly as I can, uh, it helps to keep everything organized. It helps to keep the pieces um, from being touched too many times so they don't start to fray. And I really like that method of containment. Uh, so looking ahead though at the schedule, um, the first week, which is today, uh, we cut our fabric out. Um, the next two weeks, we're making 15 blocks. And so what, what I'm gonna do when I put this in is I'm gonna look ahead and see what I need to make the, the large blocks. And I'm gonna put those on the top so that I can get to that. I could even break it up because in that pile, we have 30. Those are used to make the large blocks, which we're gonna be making the next two weeks. Um, I could even set them up into piles of, two piles of 15 with the other pieces that we need. So if you like look ahead to the pattern a little bit, you can kind of plan out what we're gonna do and um, put everything in your box accordingly. So that wraps it up for this week. We did all of our cutting. Like I said, I'm gonna put it in my bin and I'm probably gonna put and I'm gonna put the things we need for the next week on top so that when next week rolls around and I have some time to work on this quilt, I can just grab what I need out and start making those 15 blocks, which is gonna be our assignment for next week. If you have any questions on the quilt, the quilt along, or this video, just let me know in the comments below and I will be sure to answer. Thank you so much for following along and I will see you back here soon.